Hello and welcome, it's Dr. Ken here with you again. Um, AC Skills Knowledge Assessments T8 through T15, Part 1 of 3. Again, I've uh, broken it up into three components to allow you to be able to manage the time. The important aspect here is the uh, way the videos work. You need to uh, do a bit of work in pausing. Obviously, I can't pause for you. So I pose the problem or the question. I then give you opportunity to pause the video while you have a go at solving the problem. Then you continue with the video. I give you some idea of a hint. And again, ask you to pause the video. And then after you've had a go at the question, I then not only give you the answer, but uh, give you an explanation of the answer. So here's our first one. Um, first question in this section. How could power factor be determined using which selection of instruments in a single phase circuit? So out of the instruments we've listed here, which ones could you use to determine the power? So pause your video here. Okay, let's move on to the hint. So the hint is think about the relationship between power and power factor. So what are the different parameters around power, different kinds of power and power factor and their relationship. So again, pause here. So let's now move on to the answer. So the answer was you would have needed the voltmeter, wattmeter and ammeter. So power factor is the cos of the angle between real power and apparent power. So with a wattmeter would give you true power and with the ammeter and the voltmeter you could multiply the two readings together to give you the apparent power and uh, then you can use trigonometry to solve for the cos of the angle. Question two, what are the characteristics of poor power factor? So what are the characteristics of poor power factor? Our options are larger voltage drops, increased losses, larger conductors are required or maybe all of the above. So time to pause the video here. Okay, so giving you a few moments to uh, think about it. Let's move on to the hint. So here's our hint. Think about which electrical quantity changes with the power factor of all of those things. Think about the quantity that changes with the power factor. So again, there's going to be larger voltage drops, increased losses, larger conductors are required, or all of the above. Let's move on to the answer. So it's all of the above. Everything is affected. Um, the power factor that changes or the factor that changes is current. So a poor power factor, you're going to always end up with higher currents and those currents don't actually do any practical work, but still create voltage drops. They still create losses and larger conductors are required. So all of the above.
Question three now. When capacitors are used to improve power factor of an inductive load, the apparent power is what? What happens to the apparent power? Is it halved? Is it increased? Is it reduced? Or does it stay unchanged? So when a capacitors are used for power factor, the inductive load, what happens to the apparent power? Let's pause here, give you time to think about it. Okay, let's move on to the, uh, the pause hint. So here's our pause hint. Uh, draw the power triangle. What happens to the apparent power as the angle is improved? So you have to think about the power triangle and what happens to the angle when it's improved. So let's now move on to the answer. So the answer is the power or the apparent power is reduced. So draw the triangle and uh, you can see the apparent power is the hypotenuse. So if the angle gets smaller, that's the improvement part. So it was a matter of understanding the relationship. And I'll just turn my pen on here. Here's the, here's the angle that uh, we need to worry about. It gets better and better as it gets smaller. So if I can reduce my apparent power and reduce the angle to this amount, the apparent power here is now going to go down in value as the angle gets smaller and smaller until eventually the angle becomes zero and the apparent power and the real power are at unity or in phase with each other. So the answer is that they were reduced. Apparent power is reduced. So question four now, an alternator is to supply a single phase 240 volt 8.7 kilowatt electric grinder. The grinder's power factor is 0 0.72 and we need to determine the rating of the alternator the minimum current carrying capacity of the leads and the KVAR or the kilovolts amps reactive rating of the capacitor to improve the power factor to 0 0.9. So again we'll pause here. You may have to pause while you do a bit of maths and think about how to do this one. Okay, let's give you a hint now. So draw the power triangle and determine what parameters you can calculate. With the information that we've been given, what are the parameters you can calculate? So pause here if you need to. So let's move on to the answer. So the, here you can see there was a fair bit that we uh, we needed to do. So the first thing, the true power was uh, 8.7 kilowatts. We were able to determine that directly from the information that we were given. And also we could calculate the apparent power so it was the true power 
divided by the power factor, which is 8.7 divided by 7.2, and we ended up with a apparent power of 12, so nice and easy. And then the, um, the maximum current is the volts amps divided by the applied voltage. We were told it was a 240 volts applied, so if we take our um, 12.7 odd, we end up with about 50.3 amps. Now we improve our power factor, so that gives us our first triangle. We now get the apparent power at 0.9, so our apparent power now drops down to 9.6. We've added our capacitor. Our power factor is now 0.9, and we can then use Pythagoras. You can see here we've used Pythagoras to work out what the reactive component is now at 4.22 kVAR. You'll notice true power has, hasn't changed, but as our power factor has improved from 0.72 through to 0.9, the triangle has become much shallower, therefore the hypotenuse is shorter, the apparent power has become smaller, and we've been able to calculate the reactive power. Question 5. When capacitors are used to improve the power factor of an inductive load, the reactive power is what? What happens to our reactive power? We've just been through this on the previous question. So when capacitors are used to improve the power factor of an inductive load, the reactive load is either doubled, increased, decreased or unchanged. So pause here. Okay, let's go on now to the hint. So the hint is draw the power triangle. What happens to the apparent power as the angle is improved? So pause again if you need to think about it. And here's our answer. Uh, the answer is decreased. So when capacitors are used to improve the power factor of an inductive load, the apparent power is decreased. And that's all about that hypotenuse getting smaller and smaller as the angle gets closer and closer to the horizontal. So question six, which harmonic is represented in green? So we've got a fundamental in blue and we've got a harmonic in green, so it's either the fifth harmonic, the second harmonic, the fourth harmonic, or the third harmonic. So how do you go about determining which order harmonic the green wave is? So pause here while you think about it. Well, welcome back. Let's give you a hint now. 
So the hint is how many cycles within the fundamental? Are you able to count up the total number of circles, cycles I should say, from beginning to end within the period of the fundamental? So let's now move on to the answer. It's the third harmonic. And I'll just show you why it's the third harmonic if you didn't get the correct answer. The fundamental, one complete period of the fundamental is from here to here. So start to start. So that's the period of the fundamental is all the way across there. So we need to add up how many full green ones are inside that fundamental. So here is start to start. So there's one. There's the second one. And finally, there's a third one. So there are three complete green waves inside the period of the blue wave. Hence we say the green wave is the third harmonic. You can also do it by either counting the one, two, three above, or counting three below, one, two, three, but don't count them all because they all add up to six, you either count all the bumps above or all the bumps below. So question seven in an RLC, and of course RLC stands for Resistance Inductance Capacitance Circuit. What characteristics precipitate resonance? So in RLC series circuit, which ones precipitate resonance? So, no resistive component is present. The inductive and capacitive reactances is the same. Inductive reactances are, our resistance are equal. So the inductive reactance and the resistance are equal. Or third, the capacitive reactance and the resistance are equal. So I'll have a pause, you think about the answer. Okay, let's move on to the hint. So pause here while we give you the hint. What two components interact to cause resonance? Maybe even draw yourself a little phaser diagram if you're not sure. So what two components interact to cause resonance? Okay, here's the answer. So the answer is the inductive and capacitive reactances are the same. So you can see there we have a green phaser and a purple phaser, one for capacitive reactants, one for inductive reactants. When they are both the same, they cancel each other out and you're only left with the resistive component in the circuit and that's called resonance. So it's when the green and the purple arrows are the same, they cancel each other out and you're only left with the horizontal resistance in the circuit. Question eight. Which of the following loads will not produce harmonics? Right, so which ones won't produce harmonics? A computer, an air conditioner split system, a hot water service, variable speed drive. So which one of these, or multiples maybe even, which ones don't produce harmonics? A computer, air conditioning system, hot water service, variable speed drive. 
So pause here while you think about it. Okay, let's continue now to the hint. So here's our hint. Resistive loads are the only loads that won't produce any harmonics. So of the descriptions there, which ones are resistive loads and which ones maybe are non-resistive type loads or what we might call reactive loads. Okay, let's move on to the answer. The answer is the hot water surface is the only one there. A computer uses a switch mode power supply which takes energy from the source non-sinusoidally. So it's a reactive load. Air conditioner split system has an electric motor in it which is going to uh, have harmonics and a variable speed drive is produces lots and lots of harmonics because again it's a motor drive which is taking energy from the source in a switched mode approach. So question nine, harmonics in power systems cause what main issue? Harmonics in power systems cause what main issue? The four options are increased in step potentials, increased reactions of induction motors, improvement of power factor or overheating in neutrals. So step potentials go up, increase in the reactance of induction motors, improvement of power factor or overheating in neutrals. So pause here, we'll have a think about it. So let's pause here and go on to the hint. So here's our hint. What are harmonics adding to the circuit that you do use no, sorry that does no useful work? So do does no useful work. So the answer here is there's lots of current added to the circuit and that current is doing no useful work but it often is producing overheating in the neutrals in particular. Nothing to do with step potentials, got nothing to do with reactances or power factor. So harmonics in a system, the main issue is overheating in neutrals is the problem. Question 10. Which instrument would be used to detect the presence of a harmonic? So what kind of instrument could you use to test for the presence of harmonics? Could you use an analog multimeter? A voltmeter and an ammeter in combination? An oscilloscope? Or an impedance meter? Sometimes we call them an RCL meter. So the choices again, analog multimeter, volt ammeter combination, an oscilloscope, or an impedance meter, an RCL meter. So pause the video while you think about it.
So let's move on. So here's our hint. What relationships need to be compared? So what is, when we're looking at harmonics, what are the relationships we're dealing with? So let's move on now to the answer. And the answer is an oscilloscope. So to be able to see a harmonic, and harmonics have to do with currents and voltages over time. So the only instrument that is going to give us that ability to look at time is an oscilloscope. So here, you can see the blue wave is the fundamental and we've got multiple harmonics. You can see a, a light blue giving us a harmonic in here. I'm just drawing in the harmonic slowly and you can see there are five of them in actual fact inside the fundamental. So one two, three, four, five in this case so the blue one or the light blue one, the aqua colored one is the fifth fundamental and there's a what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven there's a seventh order fundamental in there as well. So again oscilloscope is the only thing that's going to give us that relationship between voltage or current and time which is what we need for harmonics. So question 11, in a series resonance circuit connected to an AC, what unhelpful issue may occur? So we have a series resonance circuit connected to AC, what unhelpful issue may occur? Our options are overheating in the inductor, insulation failure of the capacitor, very high power factor, or supply voltages will be excessive. So pause here while you have a think about that. Welcome back. Let's have a look at the hint. So the hint is what happens to the voltage around the components? So in a series resonance circuit, what happens to the voltage around the critical components? So let's move on to the answer. The answer is insulation fail of the capacitor because at resonance in a series resonance circuit you get very high voltages around the capacitor and the inductor so the biggest possibility of failure is failure of the capacitor's insulation. So capacitors are built for their capacitance and their voltage they can withstand. So this is the end of part one. Thanks for listening. I hope you've gained some improvement of your knowledge and skills around AC with our first video for the second half of the AC theory assessment.